I'm not, not going, going to the dermatology. Because that's a scam. Yeah. I'm going to give him a good more. Man, I, I could tell you yeah. what I was thinking. You started doing the thing again where you can look away the, during the unison. I just where you, can't, I can't you, look at you, you in a unison. But that's kind of the. Needed. You're, you're gonna, you know, we might have to go to unison training. And the first rule of unison is always you look at each eye other. contact. Now, listen, man. Uh, I've, just had a, I've just had a rough moment. I, well, <laughs> we don't know how rough it was, man. You know, uh, we, I could say what I was thinking, but it would just make me That's not going to help Link. Look stupider. We're not I don't think you were thinking much. But yeah, it was like I looked out here and the horror that like m- melted off of everyone's face. I was like, I've just done something stupid and I still don't know what it is. I better spit this out and then figure it out later. <laughs> you like you didn't you didn't And then I just ran to the you didn't bathroom. You immediately realized what might be wrong. No, no, I didn't. Because, yeah. because I was like, even, yeah, because it was already yellow. We were talking about how it was yellow, and then I was like, I'll just drink it. I'll just drink it. I mean, it's. I'll get another taste from here. I mean, listen. There's a couple of. I think. And, but it. I expelled it from the filter, but most of it I went through. Should, it, and I did not swallow it. I think you should rest easy because I, my my feeling is that you brought it up <laughs> into the filter, and you it, you know, and then when you spit it back out, it doesn't necessarily mean that everything that made it into the filter got caught. Definitely came out, and we also don't know what was in Lizzie's cat's poop. I mean, you, they may not have a crazy brain-eating uh, amoeba in there. They might. You'll find that out in a few weeks. But I ran to the bathroom, and then I just looked at myself in the mirror. Like I didn't know what to do when I got in there, because you said swish with some something. Uh, you said like mouthwash, and then I was there was no mouthwash. So you just stood there. I stood there for a while, and then I I rinsed swished out with water. I swished with like uh, tap water. Okay. And I spit that out, and then uh, I think you're gonna be okay. I mean, if you go to like the lake and you fall off of the jet ski and you get some water in your mouth, yeah, you don't die. There's I mean, cats we'll pooping every in once there. in a while. People do die, but right, right. You know, it's you know, it's unlikely. It's more likely that you're going to die because of this episode than me. But it's still unlikely that you're going to die. I think that's really the boat that we're in right now. Alex, did you open your mouth when you were in the L.A. River? No, I was only like waist deep. <laughs> you didn't. You didn't dip down. No. Thought about okay. it though. Now you you know that um, is that water getting warm? By the way, mm-hmm. no. <laughs> I might just be numb from the waist down. I, guess. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Are you we, too? We take are you too time. warm? Uh, no, no. Okay, okay. All right, just checking. Okay, because if you, I mean, if you're too warm. I mean, yeah. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Why? Chase can throw ice Why? in your tub. <laughs> It was, I don't know whose idea it was. Yeah, but. I mean. Why? <laughs> you done this? Look, look at this. Look at those faces. Why have you done this? I didn't do it. Chased it. Look. They just called me. Eddie sent us a message. He said, we're going to throw ice in their tub. What? I don't know why. I was like, good idea. Bath time isn't usually like why? this. Yeah. <laughs> what the? It's not that much ice. It's enough. It's cold, though. It's, it's <laughs> constricting your bladder even more. Yeah, uh, I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, you guys are good friends. I would just do it. Oh, in the it's water. going down. What is? The well, cold is just. Well, you guys. <laughs> while you guys sort out whether or not you're gonna pee and who's gonna pee first, I'm gonna uh, let Michael Murrah ask a question. If I'm stuck in the wilderness and I have to eat any animal or limb for survival, which animal or limb should I eat? Let's just skip past animal. I mean, you should eat the animal that you find, the first animal you find, any and all animals that you find if you're in a survival situation. If you, I mean. But if it's your limb. Like your own limb? Your, if, you, if you had to eat your own limb, like you, you had a way to hack it off in a sterile manner and cook it to perfection, you know, let's just say. Cook it to perfection? Let's just say there was a professional chef there just in this weird situation. I'd and eat the like, chef. And, 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 no, and he was like, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna prepare one of your limbs. The only way for you to survive is to eat one of your limbs. But I'm gonna do it. Mm, something so good. And uh, and then where he's gonna go back to his trailer? Yeah. Don't worry about the logic at this point. Okay. Don't so, worry about the logic, but apply logic to my answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're gonna go. Are you gonna go uh, uh, an arm or a leg, and which one? Because if you, and why? If you go with like like a little bit and a little bit and a li- little bit from here, a little bit from there. That's not a, that's not an option. <laughs> 
because I was going to say, like, I would start eating toes until somebody showed up, and then I would work my way up the leg. Because I would eat a leg, but I would start with the toes, and I'd stretch it out over days. Uh, you know... The, and and by the way, each time, yeah, I'd have to hack off another toe, and then my foot, and then my ankle, and it. there's more hacking involved. Okay, well... Um, and, and, so maybe this isn't my answer. In my scenario, it's... But at least it, I keep it, more in my leg. In my scenario, if first thing happens is a surgeon shows up, puts me under, and nicely removes the leg so I don't have to experience it. And then a professional chef comes and prepares it in a perfect way. You're making all can, can the I, rules. Can I just say that that is, this is my scenario. You can do whatever you want to yours. You said apply logic to the answer. There is, yeah. There Where is, does the surgeon come from? There is a, that's, he's, that's, he's living in the trailer with lo the chef? logic to the scenario. There's no logic in the scenario to the answer. So there's a trade-off between a leg. Obviously a leg has a lot of meat and you can, I mean, you could probably survive off it for a while, especially if he like jerkied at least half of it. You know, or maybe there's a refrigerator out there. And you can, <laughs> so, there's a lot of meat in the leg, but then you've got then you don't have a leg, and that's it's difficult to get around. Not having an arm, you can still get around and do things in a survival situation. But there's not as much meat on the arm, so it's sort of like I'm going to take an arm and I'm going to take my left arm because I'm right-handed. You should take your right hand because you're left-handed, and then I'm going to eat it and I and I'm going to use my legs to get out of to extricate myself from the situation to get back to wherever the civilization is that the surgeon and look the at chef that guy are running out of the woods with an arm, yeah. his own arm, and he's munching on it. Yeah, yeah, perfectly. Well, it would be on a platter. What do you think, Mike? We're a little cold right now. <laughs> Sorry, what was the question? <laughs> Did it? You're not listening. Did it get cold? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Is it freezing? It's ice. I'm coming out slowly. <laughs> You're like floating. I've gotten taller. Is there any heat survival tips that you have? You know what? <laughs> so you weren't listening. Don't let yourself <laughs> shiver. Shivering actually oh, so hard. is it's, admitting defeat. Not Don't me. let yourself shiver. Uh, John Vettemthadottle asks, what one thing would you bring to help you survive if you were to be stranded on an island? Um, personal chef. <laughs> personal chef. <laughs> if you were to be stranded on an island, what's the one thing I would bring? I mean, the first thing I think of is a knife hmm. that has matches inside of it. And um, <laughs> what else? Eddie's trying to distract <laughs> me with pictures of survival movies yeah um what is that one i'm not mentioning any of them take that away take it away no one can see it so it's just putting us it's like you're throwing ice on us now i think it's pretty funny eddie um, uh, so what thing? i mean i i would bring a survival knife because it has survival type stuff in it i mean a chef's not gonna do anything except whine no yeah not a chef that's not gonna work he because he, He's going to need just as you much gotta help think as about, me. you got to think about heat. you got to think about shelter. you got to think about... I couldn't make something sharp. I think that's my problem. It's like you think you could, but you can't. How about, I how mean, about this? Like I can't make an arrowhead. How about a boat? I can't even find an arrowhead. How about a bridge back to the mainland? <laughs> like, an, can I, can, like a bridge in your pocket? Can I bring a bridge that then I hit a button and it just goes back to the mainland and I walk? Yeah, or a teleportation device. Sure, Rhett. <laughs> and you can bring... Like you're, the, you're, you're, you're a you're backpack listening? full of things that I need. Um, I mean, I just, yeah, I mean, how specific what, what, do we need to be? What would you bring if it's something you could actually pack, and you're like, I'm going to survive on a stranded island? Does a gun with a knife on the end of it? That's a bayonet. Is but is that too much? Because I don't. I'd rather have a. I'd rather have a gun to shoot things with, not a knife. I can't. But how much ammo? You're gonna run out of ammo unless you fashion it from. Uh, Mm, uh, like like endangered species. But is this like a video game pellets. where I get unlimited ammo? Mm, no. Is that a video game? This is an island in the real world. I think I'd have an axe before I had a knife. An axe? Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had a survival knife as a kid, and you took you you took the compass end off of it, and it had matches in there, and it had a a long metal thing that was wound up, and I think that's a saw. That you use like this. Yeah, it could be. You know what? You know, you're wrapping around stuff? There's only one way to find out. Just get lost, and I'll send you one of those knives. <laughs> you actually have one. You bought one for yourself. I do. I have one. You know, know what, what day, day it is. is. It's Thursday. Is it warming up now? And Thursday. Oh, what happened? Me 
means made. You guys just gave up, didn't you? You, just, you agreed. You made it. A, you made a pact. Yep. You made a pee pact. Yep. <laughs> you did. <No>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're the only ones who will know if there's urine in here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You keep that. Can to you guys sing? Can you sing the male song? Can you play it again? Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> when does it start? You know, you know what day it is. It's Thursday. And Thursday. <laughs> means male. Wow, that's good, guys. I nice. mean, in the. In the condition, real that you're cold too, and not prepared. I'd do better in a, if we do it again later. <laughs> Maybe okay, again. we'll do it yeah. <laughs> all afternoon. Hello, Jen. Hi. <clears throat> wow, a lot. This, we've been through a lot today already. Yeah, it smells super weird. Are you thirsty? There. Because definitely not. No. no. Not thirsty. No. Mm -mm. Link's urine was all right around in here. Good. How does it? How does it smell? Terrible. A mixture of things I never want to smell again. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to need a deep clean. Yeah. 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 They're bringing the hazmat people. Candles. I'm not watching this one back. Okay. So let's the cheer us up. Okay. Man. Yeah. I got something pretty crazy here. This and this letter that you can read. Hello, Red and Link. My name is Quinn from Tennessee. My roommate Chris and I watch oh, GMM okay. every day. Oh, really? Well, I watch it every day. What's wrong with. Chris. <laughs> Congratulations on the Mythical Museum. By the way, and as you can imagine, the concept intrigued me to the point that I would send a mythical object with hopes that it is worthy for the museum, so I enclosed the Time Stone. It's a Time Stone, I knew it. The Time Stone is a mystical stone from a different dimension composed mostly of geranium, a metal made from elements that usually don't exist in this dimension. The stone holds many time-mending properties that allow it to manipulate time in many ways if used correctly. Many seeked this stone for its power to manipulate time and was even the beginning of the epic war, one of the bloodiest wars in Zeranian history. The stone was eventually banished to our dimension where its properties can be, can't be as easily manipulated by an ancient Zathandaran king, Lorenzo Zunthros, thus ending the epic war. I found the stone at a gift shop in Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. And the only reason where I, why I know of this stone's history is because after I got home with the stone, I was teleported to the planet Zunthros where I met the Kamano King Clemary Zunthros, who taught me the history of the stone. He basically wanted assurance that the stone would not be abused for personal gain. <laughs> While in our dimension, the stone still has powers, but it is very rarely activated. Feel free to put this in your museum if you want, or activate its powers. Yes. Oh, and one last thing. While I was on Zonthros, I met a Zuron who taught me the Zeranian language. It's pretty easy to learn, so I thought that maybe this could be the mythical language for all the beasts out there who are interested. Thanks for taking the time to read this Quinn Allen Bishop. The first of his of his family. Quinn has a sort of a what do you call this? Uh, a language, an alphabet. The two things that go together, and one's a reference for the other. What is the thing? Yeah, a lexicon. No, it's not a lexicon. It's um, a language key. It's a a rubric. A rubric. It is a rubric, isn't it? Is it a rubric? <laughs> Come on, somebody. Uh, I don't know. Mike? No, no one, Alex? no one yeah, went to graduate yeah. school. We're all, we all just did bachelors, and now we work in entertainment, <laughs> <laughs> so we know nothing. <clears throat> it's a rubric. It's not a rubric. I Google the thing. Key. Google the thing that um, shows you not be. that how to translate like a code, a, a hidden cipher, code. Right? It's a cipher. It's a cipher. He gave us a cipher, <laughs> and then we are going to decipher. Well, we, you know what? Yeah, when when we Google the thing that helps you translate stuff, Google oh. says Google Translate. <laughs> Self-serving. So anyway, I mean, cipher. Oh, that makes sense. I'm not gonna take the yes. time right now, but this is a message in the Zeranian language, and here is the Zeranian alphabet and its reference to the phonetic alphabet, 26 letters. And you know what? We could do that later. Yeah. 
We will do it later. What an epic story. Uh, Chris's brother? Qu Quinn. Quinn. Quinn, uh, you should be a fantasy writer. You should be. You already are, sir. So don't <laughs> hold back. Do not hold back. This is this is your future. The time stone. Hope you, ha hope you have another one. I'm pretty flattered you gave us this one. Thank you. <laughs>